We are joined by Mark Milne. He is the creator of 3030 Tennis. Now, just to encapsulate what we're getting to here, as a sports fan, all of us, our attention spans seem to be waning and dwindling, and people like their sports, but they like it microwave version. They like it express. They like a takeout version, a drive through menu, if you will. And so Mark has come on and I'm Brian Fenley and anchored Fox sports radio. And I broadcaster for the USTA to talk about a new way of looking at tennis, which is condensed, which is streamlined, but also has a lot of interesting intricacies to it, which he is making mainstream. And so we're going to talk about what he's doing here. Mark, appreciate you doing this. So, as you and I have talked about before off camera here, the whole notion here is that people, it seems like people are just getting busier and their schedules are just not having time to fulfill. Let's say if they wanted to play a three setter in tennis, and that's a couple hours usually. So how did you ultimately decide on trying to get people out there to play tennis, feel like they're getting a lot out of it, but also cutting down on the time they're out on the court? Yeah, thanks, Brian. Yeah, thanks for that. Yeah, tennis, the, the matches obviously at the top level, even at club level, can last too long nowadays. And you're correct. You play a best of three sets match, and yeah, it could go into an hour and a half, two hours. The professionals are playing three sets that can sometimes take three hours. The best of five that are played at the Grand Slams are lasting four or five hours. It's just a bit long now for most, or for the younger generation especially. You've got to be a real tennis fan to sit to be willing to sit and watch a match for that length of time. So about four years ago, I started playing a game of touch tennis. It's played indoors on a smaller court, a badminton court with a sponge ball, and you're restricted to an hour's booking slot. So I came up with the 30-30 tennis scoring system such that I would be able to play a best of three sets match in one hour. And it's very, very simple. It's identical to traditional tennis, except instead of starting every game at love all, you start every game at 30 all. Now, when you write down 30 all as 30-30, and you read that, it reads as 30-30, hence the branding of 30-30, which is done in a similar fashion to 2020 cricket. The first 30 is written in digits. The second uh, 30 is in three zero in digits so it's a faster alternative format that yes you can play matches in a, a much shorter time and a lot of sports have been looking at that as you've seen I, I've also been involved in badminton squash table tennis they've all changed their scoring systems so that they, they create smaller bite-sized sections of play instead of a set that can potentially last an hour in 30 30 a set lasts around about 20 minutes on average so yes a best of three sets match is completed within an hour which is ideal for a, an hour's booking slot basically if you do want to test yourself a bit more it'd be quite exciting you could play a best of five sets match using 30 30 and it's not going to take any longer than an hour and a half so it really all came around i was looking for some way in an hour to play best of three sets. And yeah, I've come up with this idea of 30-30 tennis. There are obviously other shorter formats at the moment being used in tennis. The, the most popular and common one is the, is the, it's called Fast Four. It was created by Tennis Australia. That's where you play sets to four games. There are no advantage points played. When you get to juice, you play a sudden death point. You play no lets and you play a tie break at three all. Fast four is the most common one out there at the moment. There are also the use of the 10 point match tie break, sometimes called a champion's tie break. It's used in the third set sometimes or in the ATP WTA doubles instead of a traditional set the third deciding set of a match is at one set all uses a 10 point match tie break so we're seeing that and we're also seeing just recently in the last year and a half Patrick Moritoglu, Serena Williams' coach and a well-known French coach basically has his academy in France he has created a format called Ultimate Tennis Showdown. And what the matches there are timed matches. 
They consist of four quarters each of eight minutes. And with, with a match taking around about 40 to 45 minutes, it, it's very, very different. They, they have speeded it up by having less time between points. They only have 15 seconds between points. They play tie-break like scoring just one, two, three, four. Whoever wins the most quarters wins the match. He also has introduced what they call joker cards, where a player has the option to play two cards per quarter, like the next point will count double or my opponent must serve in volley on the next point and so on. They're joker cards. So there are shorter formats out there being tried. Fast four, the rules of fast four have been recognised by the International Tennis Federation in Appendix 5 of the rules. They include sets to four games, no add points and so on. So 30-30 is an alternative to these other shorter formats. And, and my belief is that it could potentially be better than these uh, formats because it still maintains the DNA of tennis. In 30-30, you're still playing sets to six games. You're still playing a tie break at six all. You're still playing the juice add points out in full. And you're also still retaining having to win two points in a row to win a game. None of the other shorter formats include any of these. The, the DNA is lost, basically. So in a nutshell, yeah, 30-30, very simple. The only change is, yeah, every game starts at 30 all. I've doubled up the change of ends. Because the games tick over so much more quickly, if you're changing ends after one game and then after every two games, you end up changing ends too quickly. So that has been doubled up. You will play two games, change ends. You will then play four games before changing ends again. You're still serving alternately, but what this in effect does is it cuts down the number of change of ends per set by a factor of two. For a set that doesn't go to a tie break, there are only three change of ends. If it goes to a tie break, uh, there are four change events. The only other small, slight, uh, slight changes, rather than using the traditional tie break at six games all, we use the nine point tie break. That's a tie break that you have to only play a total of nine points. First person to get five points wins the tie break with a sudden death at four all. So these are really the changes. It's very simple. You can have a couple of juniors within a few minutes playing 30-30 tennis and yeah it, it, it's being I've been rolling it out over the world for the last three or four years feedback has been excellent youngsters have really been liking the faster paced the, the game score ticks over so much more quickly there are a lot more juice games that's more exciting for them and so on so yeah that 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 in a nutshell is 30-30 Brian Oh, you you totally broke it down for me. I do have some questions to that, but that really yeah. does lay things out for everybody who's interested in what is the similar components to tennis traditionally and what you're doing. And then also, like you pointed out, there are some competitors out there also trying for some streamlined stuff, but obviously yours mm -hmm. has a lot of success. One of the things that I wanted to point out, and Mark Milne is joining us, a creator of 3030, I'm Brian Finley, a commentator for the USTA, is... There are more. There are some sports, Mark, that you know that are more on the side of being a traditionalist. And there are other sports that are more willing to try things differently and experiment. So there are sports like, let's say, in, in America, baseball, it's really, really hard to try new things because there's this old format. It, there's a conservative belief and the game needs to stay how it is. So I feel like in ways, and you would know this, Mark, is, is there are a lot of traditionalists in tennis that are trying to preserve the game the way it was or the way it is. So how do you deal with that pushback that you get from those? And what is your answer to them when they say stuff like, well, we can't change it. We need to be a traditional type of sport where we keep it is as it was when it was founded. Yeah, uh, I'm a great believer in that things have to evolve, whether it's sport, whether it's life and so on, things have to evolve. You cannot actually afford to stand still or you will become irrelevant. I, I sometimes go back to the Kodak camera 
they, they, they used to have film and so on, and you printed out your... They never recognised that the digital age was coming along, and they, they failed to move, they failed to act, and, and they disappeared, basically. That's just an example. You have to evolve. I, I'm an engineer. I, tennis is actually... I'm just an enthusiast for tennis. I've played 50 years, was reasonably successful as a junior, and played club tennis, county tennis, but I'm an engineer and I, I realise that designs have to constantly improve and evolve or you'll get left behind, you will you will disappear. Now sport is the same, the, there's a lot online about the age group of people that are involved in tennis growing year on year. Patrick Moritoglu has figures saying that the average age of people is going up year by year that are involved in tennis. Now, that's not sustainable. The, you have to start attracting the younger generation. You have to attract the best athletes to the sport of tennis as well. And the only way we're going to do that, I believe, is by attracting them, making it more exciting. And a shorter format is an option. I'm not alone. Patrick Moritoglu is seeing this. The tiebreak 10s, people are seeing it. Fast 4 has been introduced by the ITF. They all realise that we can't afford to stand still. We need to evolve. Please remember that I'm not saying let's get rid of traditional tennis. That must remain the Grand Slam best of fives and the, the top level ATP thousand, the WTA thousands. They must remain. They have to be the ultimate test. But there is room for alternative, shorter, faster paced, more exciting formats. And you have to move with the times. You, you cannot afford to stand still, to be honest, or you will die. You will die. You, you will stop attracting the younger generation. There, there are a lot of options out there for the younger generation now. And to attract them to tennis, something has to be done because giving up hours and hours to play a match or so on is, is just does not seem to be working. I, I have three kids that are all in their mid to late 20s now they've never taken to watching tennis it, it just goes on too long it's it's boring to them they, they've never sat down and watched the whole match it's too long and I think they're fairly typical of youngsters uh, you, you have to be a real enthusiast so something where yeah a best of three sets match could be televised in an hour, it could be fast, it could be exciting. And it also opens up the opportunities of creating more superstars. At the moment, the, the guys at the top level are the super fit ones. There's only a, a small handful that are capable of winning Grand Slams and so on. If you have alternative shorter formats, you've got more chance of maybe getting some of the younger guys who haven't built up the stamina and that. And that's what Patrick Moritoglu is planning with his UTS, Ultimate Tennis Showdown. He is going to select 10 what he terms most exciting players and he's going to take them all over the world traveling a bit like the formula one racing car circus and he will play his short format in various cities at various venues he's even suggesting he could maybe put up a court at the pyramids in cairo and just move around maybe 10 events per year and he moves around where there's ranking points and given and it, it just becomes a show almost to try and put tennis out there and attract youngsters and that's what I can see 30 30 tennis potentially doing as well we it will be an event that's a shorter duration it could be played over three or four days instead of a week or two weeks it, it, playing shorter matches gives you more options uh, in, in a session at the US uh, Open you're lucky to see maybe a men's match and a women's match with shorter formats you could potentially go and in the same time watch four or five different matches twice as many players you're getting to see it just becomes more dynamic it's it, it moves along more quickly rather than sitting watching a set that goes to seven six that takes an hour you, you've played a match in an hour you've seen two players thrash it out and you have a winner after an hour if they're just playing best of three so yeah one of, one of the things mark that's interesting you brought that up because you you pointed out in, in a lot of the positives of what you're doing, the, the timing, the ability to have, you know, made for television events and to get more matches in the ability to connect with the younger generation and that they're able to squeeze in more opportunities for tennis, condense tournaments, not make them so elongated and, and, and long so you can get people in, get them out, 
things moving a little bit faster. But I'm also curious about how when people look at, and I would love to hear your take on this, the true test of a tennis player. And, and again, I know this is very much subjective, but it's like in any sport, it's like we have to have a certain amount of games and then you got to go to the playoffs. Let's say we're talking basketball and then we get to a champion and there's no shortcuts because if that's the way the best player is crowned, then that's the way we go. So my question to you is, do you think with this condensed format that you are going to see it harder to define who the very best are in tennis because it's a shorter format? Unlike say, if you go to a grand slam and you watch a, a, yeah, a long four, even a five hour, five setter, but you really feel like maybe that's the true test of what a champion is. Or do you feel like we can do something in a smaller format where we don't lose that luster, if you will? Yeah, no, it's, it's a good question. Uh, I think you could have alternative champions. You, you could, you're going to have the champions that are good at the long format, the Grand Slam events and so on. But I think a shorter format can also produce a shorter format champion. And I think you're right, it'll be more unpredictable yeah. because with the, sh- the longer matches at the moment, Djokovic and so on, they're, they're going to win most of the games. But over the shorter course, it does become more unpredictable on who's going to win. Now, I don't think that's a bad thing, to be honest. It, it can sometimes be a bit boring that if you know who the four players are going to be, they get to the semifinals uh, before the tournament starts. I think the unpredictability would, would be, and it would be interesting, would we would the same players continue to be successful over the shorter format consistently sort of stuff I, I have the analogy with athletics you you have like the long distance marathon where you run the 26 miles and it lasts two hours but you also have the middle distance events like the 800 meters the 1500 meters and you also have the, sh- the sprint events the the 100 meters the 200 meters each of these type of athletes are all unique to the distance they're running. And tennis could potentially have the same. The Grand Slams is your long distance. The ATP best of three, WTA 1000 best of three is your middle distance. But you can have the sprint events that are potentially 30-30, fast four, uh, tie-break tie tens is ultra sprint. That's where they play a match that is just one tie-break to 10 points. I feel that's just a bit too quick. They, they have held about five or six events over the last five or six years. There's one due to be played in Dubai in October, and they invite eight players, and they play a knockout. So there's four quarterfinals, two semifinals, and a final. It's all played out in one night of three hours, but each match is just one tie break to 10 points. It's very, very brutal. So you can travel all the way to Dubai, get knocked out in the quarterfinals and actually finish, basically. It's a bit short. But yeah, I, I think you can have different types of athletes, for different horses for different courses, basically. Short, medium and long distance events. I, I, like I, think, I think I think that would be great for tennis rather than just having... We've got a very small section of players that are well known and are popular and so on it'd be great to have marathon winners 100 meter winners they would be unique champions in their own right and i think that that scenario shorter format could produce that and would get more players out there making money uh, and, and so on oh i think that's a really interesting point because then there would be no overlapping everybody would know okay this is the champ of this certain event. And, and it's not like there's a lot of blending in because like you said, there are different formats, different tournament styles. And if you win that, that doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be the best at that, but you all know that there are different rules and regulations to all of them. I have one more question for you, Mark. And since you thought of this idea and, and obviously you've put a lot of work into getting the word out, and yep. I want to know how far along you are in terms of the effort that you've had to put in to get the word out. What does that look like? I know you, like you said, you have, you know, a day job that you're working as an engineer. And so that takes a lot of your time, but obviously you're an enthusiast for racket sports as you talked about. So how far along has this come based upon your efforts and what do your efforts look like on a grassroots movement level? 
Yeah, I can't quite believe how far it has come, actually. It was four years ago when I, when I first came up with this idea and thought, oh, yeah, this, this, this actually works. Let, let's see where it can go, basically. So four years ago, I, I contacted Judy Murray, believe it or not. She, she being in Scotland would be the best person to contact, wanted to see what she thought of it, would she be able to help me with it, basically. She she said, yeah, I use this. This is nothing new. Starting games at 30 all has been used in training over many, many years to give players the opportunity to practice playing the big points. It's nothing new. All you've done, really, you've tidied it up and made it a competitive format. But she was too busy to get involved, so she pe- put me on to the ITF, I got in touch with the ITF. They liked the idea, asked me to apply formally. So I completed the form to amend the rules of tennis. They, they took it forward to the rules of tennis committee meeting in June 2017. They discussed it. They came back and knocked me back because they already had fast four. Uh, out for trial. So I said to them, well, okay, yeah, it's really very early days. It's basically, the only people that know about this are me and my partner and Judy Murray and another guy at Tennis Scotland that I spoke to about it. So I'm going to go away and I'm going to create website, get logo, just go, for, go the whole bang. Let's get it out there for trialing and I'll come back to you whenever I think the time is right, basically. So since then, yeah, four years has gone on. It's been out there just through social media, LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, Facebook, just the whole lot of social media. People have been trying it, letting me know. The feedback has been excellent, especially, as I said, with the youngsters. And the trialing is ongoing. The I, I've had a lot of people just individually using it and say this is great fun. I've had some people organize competitions, but with the COVID scenario, I had a lot more people or, uh, looking to organize competitions. I needed more feedback based on people running competitions, just at club level, tournament level sort of style. So that is ongoing and the case is still building. I, I, I will go to the ITF. I've, I've got it penciled down what I'm going to say and so on, but I need a bit more trialing, a bit more feedback before I go back to them. And I, I think I've got a reasonable case. I, Four years ago, there was two or three of us knew about this. I now have hundreds, if not thousands of people know about it and have tried it and like it. So I'm now confident that it works. It's not just my own opinion. A lot of people have come back and said, yeah, this is a great idea, it's super and so on. So I'm now confident I've got a decent case. And yeah, the plan is to reapply to the ITF. They're, they're aware, I, I keep them up to date regularly on how things are going. And yeah, I... I I'm, I'm biased. I, I do feel that it, it ticks all the boxes. That seeing youngsters coming home, having played a fast four match and winning 4-1, 4-2, it's teaching them nothing about real tennis. Okay, it's teaching them tennis, but it's, it's not the same as playing real tennis. When you come back after playing 30-30, you will have played sets to six games. You will have got used to playing the juice and the add points. It's, it's one of the biggest things that's lacking in tennis is not playing the add points. I think that has been a bad idea. It's such an anticlimax when you get to juice and a single point then decides that hard fought game. Keeping, when you watch tennis, some of the best games are the games that have the juice and multiple ads, that is retained. So it's teaching kids the fundamentals, the basics of tennis. You have to get to six games. You have to lead by two. You have to win the tough games. You play a tie break at six all. It's so much better than playing sets to four games and so on. And it's faster paced. If, if you play tennis, if you try it, the game score ticks over so much more quickly. You, you know, you're not sitting at two all after 20 minutes play. You finished a set after 20 minutes, basically. The, the game score just ticks over so much more quickly. It's more dynamic. It's more exciting. And I say, yeah, every point really counts. With this format, every second point you play is a game point. Yeah. So the, the, there's no points like love all or 40 love that are sort of a bit more meaningless. Every single point you play actually means something. So you, you can't afford to drop off for even a, a few points or you, you're going to lose two or three games very rapidly sort of style. So, yeah, that that's where, where 
that's my take. That's yeah. my take. I'm I'm biased, but I do have a <laughs> lot of people. I do have a lot of people now saying, yeah, th- this is a really good idea, and and the branding's important as well because it's obviously branded on the back of 2020 cricket that has revolutionised cricket. The cricket is looking to try and become part of the Olympic Games in 2028. So the format of 2020 cricket could really go to a global stage if it get, gets accepted for the Olympic Games. 30-30 is the younger sibling of 2020. So the branding is important as well. You got the branding, you got the pedigree, and I think with the extra persistence, it, it's all going to work out for you. And for anything that we talked about between Mark and myself, I encourage everybody to go to his website where you can see that branding, and it is 3030tennis.com, and that is the first 30 written out in lettering, then the numbering 30tennis.com. You can find out all the information you need about what Mark is doing, the format, reaching out to him. We're going to get this interview out there on all the social medias as well to get the word out. But Mark, I'm Brian Fenley. A lot of fun doing this, and look forward to keeping tabs on what you are doing, and I really appreciate your time. Fantastic, Brian. Thanks very much. Very much appreciated, too.